Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host, um, with my sidekick Beatrice. Um, we want to wish you a happy Juneteenth. Today is Juneteenth. It's also now an official government holiday. So happy Juneteenth to everybody. Although I think um, yesterday was like the federal holiday. Banks were supposed to be closed today. And also happy early Father's Day to all the dads out there. And when I say all the dads out there, I don't mean just guys who have fathered children. Um, and by the way, you're not a dad if you're if you don't do anything for your kids. Um, but guys that just help out. I, I was thinking back today to my neighborhood that I grew up in. And um, you know, pretty much everybody had a dad in the neighborhood. Um, and I remember several of the men that would just play with the kids, you know, like take us camping, take us fishing, even just little stuff like taking us to the dump. Like there were, there were some kids that lived across the street and their dad would take the trash out to the dump um, a few miles away and he would let any kids that were around ride in the back of the pickup truck all the way out there and then you know he'd come back with us so we had another neighbor who would you know like he had a shop in his garage he didn't care if the kids went in there just you know we'd be playing at one person's house and their dad wouldn't necessarily be home and somebody else's dad would come home I remember a guy that we we'd see him and he'd be his son would be playing shoot hoop with us we'd be like hey Mr. Blavel come on over here and he would always he would come over and like not a suit but certainly like work clothes with dress shoes and stuff he would come over and immediately get in a game two on two game or whatever so those were all dads who like made a difference I think about some of the scout masters I had as a kid or guys that coach sports at school you know, all of them had an impact. I can remember all of them. So, um, if you're one of those people, um, happy Father's Day to you. So, um, we're here in Maine. Um, I have a delivery tomorrow morning. Um, and the place I'm delivering is called Easton, Maine. And it's so far north that if you go in any direction, any ordinal direction, northeast, southwest, you go in any ordinal direction from Easton other than south, you're going to end up in Canada. Now, you might end up in New Brunswick if you go east. You might end up in Quebec if you go north or west. So that's how far up it is. And Maine's, Maine's kind of interesting. Um, it seceded from Massachusetts in in. Um, in 1820 and was admitted to the Union as part of the Missouri Compromise, which was in 1820. Um, it's the pine cone state and vacation land. So I guess you vacation with pine cones when you come up here. They have a state crustacean and I bet you can guess what it is. That's right, it's lobster. Um, anyway, the capital's Augusta, largest city is Portland, Portland, Maine, not Portland, Oregon. Although Portland, Oregon is also the largest city in its state and not the capital. So apparently Portland's that are the largest cities don't get much respect. Um, what else do you need to know about Maine? Oh, in Maine, the easternmost point in, in the United States is in Maine. But it's called West West Quaddy Point. And it's like, where's East Quaddy Point then? Or where's just Quaddy Point? Because this is the easternmost point in the country. I guess the, the Quaddy Point or East Quaddy Point is underwater at this point. So anyway, I just share that with you. Um, I bet you thought I was going to talk about the 20th Maine at the Battle of Gettysburg. I'm not, although I will sometime. Um, so today I just wanted to, um, I don't know, speak my mind, rant a little bit. I like, I like my YouTube channel and I appreciate the fact that we now have over 250 subscribers and I appreciate the people that comment 
um, even when it's even when it's negative comments. But I but I do want to say something about um, some people's comments, and that's this. And you know, other people have said this on their channels, and I and I so I understand where they were coming from. You know, I. You know, I like pizza, but it's not my favorite meal, okay? But if somebody says, hey, I want to eat pizza, I don't respond by saying, that's a terrible idea. I can't believe you even suggested that, right? And so every once in a while, I get somebody that's like, dude, I can't believe, you know, that you went to Prime. Um, but what, by the way, people said that when I was at GP Transco, they're like, oh, that's a horrible company, blah, blah, blah. And, and so, you know, what I, what I've tried to say in the past and be nice about it is that nobody, nobody is in my shoes, right? Nobody's sitting in my seat when I'm sitting there and we all have to do what we feel is best. But the other thing to understand about people that are entrepreneurial is they want to take risk. Now, will this experiment that we're doing here at Prime work out? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty sure it will. I don't know if with 100% certainty that it will. Sorry, I'm getting a little glare here. Um, but if I didn't try, I know with 100% certainty that I'd never know. You know, like Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the goals, or uh, let me let me back up. Wayne Gretzky said this, you, you fail to score on 100% of the shots that you don't take. And I'm, I might be paraphrasing, but basically, he said the first way you're going to score is by throwing the puck towards the net. Now, he is pretty good at it, you know, Hall of Famer, the great one. And so that's true That's true in business, right? If, if somebody said, and I'm sure it happened, if somebody said to Jeff Bezos, hey, man, that idea of just not having any stores and just sending everything out by parcel post or UPS for basically everything that anybody wants, that's not gonna work. People like to go to stores. People are not gonna, you know, they might buy one or two things, but they're not gonna just like sign up and subscribe to have you send them a giant pack of paper towels once a month. That's not gonna work. You're not gonna make any money at it. I'm sure people said that. I, I assume people said that. But for whatever reason, Bezos stuck to his guns and you know pretty soon he's going to get launched into space that's how good he is so again i i don't know if everything's going to turn out as well as i had hoped but i don't know that it won't and heck it might even turn out better so while there are people that fail at this endeavor there are also people that are successful at it and I'd like to, you know, I'm hoping, but also working to make sure that I'm in that latter group. So if you have a constructive idea, constructive comment even, you know, like some of, some of our commenters, they, they add to what I've said. And, it, and it's a great part of the conversation. They tell me stuff I didn't know. That's really cool. I like to learn new stuff all the time. I like to learn stuff, you know, I'm just a, I feel like I'm a lifelong learner. I want to keep learning things. So those comments are welcome. If I'm like legit wrong, like factually wrong about something and somebody tells me, then, I'll, then I want to issue a correction. But for somebody to, to like want to sit in my seat and wear my shoes, that's probably not going to happen because you're not, it, it's, it's, it's unserious. It's unserious. Just like, you know, there are people that drive cars that I just would not buy. 
but I don't walk up to them in a parking lot and go, dude, I can't believe you bought that piece of shit. Haven't you read the reviews on that? Don't you know there was, like, they've been subject to 20 recalls and that the National Highway Transportation, you know, Safety Administration, NHTSA, said that um, this is one of the most dangerous cars in the world? Of course I don't do that. None of us do it, right? We don't do that. We, we might have, we might have, like, little rivalries, like somebody likes the Jets and I like the Bills, okay? Little rivalry. But I don't think, I don't think they're an idiot for liking the Jets. I understand why people like teams. So if, if you're one of those people that goes through life telling, constantly telling people how they're going to fail or how they've made mistakes, you know, the problem isn't with them. It's with you. And you might be a person who's never been willing to take any risk. And that's okay. If you're risk averse, that's okay. But, but you know, but taking risk is part of what makes life worth living sometimes, you know? Like, I remember when I was a kid, like six, seven years old, I was a pretty good swimmer. And I was not, I've never been afraid of the water. Never been afraid of the water. Even, and I've, sw I've swam in the open ocean, you know, like where you couldn't even see the shore. Um, it, you know, I was in the Navy, right? I, like water was something that just seemed to come naturally to me. Um, and I remember I was gonna go down a curved, um, this is at a public pool, curved uh, sliding board. Um, or curved slide and I got on my knees you know to do it now I sat back so my butt was on my you know the back of my feet and this girl this little girl says to me you you can't do that you'll kill yourself and I was like no I won't um, now she could have been right and I wouldn't be here telling this story but she was wrong I didn't kill myself I carried it off and I even kind of dove in at the end I've done lots of things that I didn't know how they would turn out okay and I try to take advice and I'm I know that I don't know everything um, but I but I do my homework and so if you're one of those people that just goes around telling people how they're not going to be successful um, how they're making a disastrous mistake. I mean, that's not good enough. If, if you're going to say that, then you have to give them the right answer. But if you don't have the right answer, which you don't because you don't know them, you don't know their situation, then you probably should just keep it to yourself. You know, I called the guy up when I was at GP Transco to set up my 401k. And I told him how much I, and I think I might have told this story already. But I told him how much um, I wanted to put in, a percentage of my pay. He's like, well, at your age, that's really not very much. You should be contributing this much. And I said, so, and by the way, I was a financial advisor. I had all my securities licenses. I could sell any, any fund. I, I used to sell Timberland REITs, right? Really <laughs> really specialized stuff, you know, because um, I had a Series 7. I'd been a general securities principal at a, at a hedge fund and stuff. And I said to him, I said, so without asking, you wouldn't know that I already have a pension. Isn't that right? Well, yeah. And I said, without asking, you wouldn't know that I used to, I have had a series seven, series 63, 66, 62, and series 24 general securities principle, would you? Oh, no. I said, so let's just stick with what I said. And my point is not to, you know, he, he was just this young guy that was doing phone sales at John Hancock. And my point is this, if you don't know somebody's full picture, and by the way, he should have maybe before he said anything, all he, in fact, all he was doing was like, always tell them they should put more in, right? That, that was the sales pitch. Always tell them they need to put more, especially if they're over 50. 
Um, but if he'd, if he'd have done a little homework, he'd have known that that was probably okay, that I had a reason for doing that. Um, and, and so if people want to ask me about my experiences, about my, like why I'm doing something, I'm happy to answer that. Okay. We're a, f we're a few weeks into this thing and you know, I'm just getting my feet under me. And so I want this to be successful and I'm willing to share, um, share the results, but don't go through life telling people why they can't do stuff. Because by the way, I, I'm a guy who's been told I couldn't do stuff like my whole life. Um, I graduated in the top half of my class from law school, but I don't have a bachelor's degree. In fact, when I was interviewing to be admitted to the bar, I was being interviewed by a lawyer and he's like, well, you don't have a bachelor's degree? I'm like, no. He goes, well, I, I don't think that's right. I, can you even do this? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> because he didn't even trust that a guy who wanted to be a lawyer would have at least made sure that he could be admitted to the bar without having a bachelor's degree. You know, and so, you know, people told me in my naval career, oh, you won't like that command. That command sucks. I'd go there and be successful and liked what I did. Oh man, you're going to do this for shore duty? Because they just wanted to be lazy and hand out basketballs. I wanted to try to advance my career. They're like, that dude, you're, that's going to suck, man. You got to work like 18 hours a day there. Okay. I'm not the guy to tell, oh, you won't like that. Because I will always do it just to find out. So, you know, this experience of Prime, this is just another example of me going down that slide on my knees. Um, I didn't get killed then. I didn't drown. I'm hoping that I don't get killed here or drown. You know? Um, but anyway, I hope you take the positive from this message because when somebody tells you you can't do something, it might just be that they think they can't. And you just need to, you just need to, you know, be true to yourself and go with your gut sometimes. So anyway, I share that with you again. Happy Juneteenth, and it's a it's an American holiday. So happy Juneteenth to everybody, and happy Father's Day to all all the people out there. Um, take care, and we will see you next time. Uh, and this has been a long trip. Um, and uh, figure out where we're going after we drop this load tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye.